integral year two projectiles. This is the exercise two in the trajectories section. Question one. I've drawn the diagram out already. Um, balls thrown from the top of a hill, not very high hill, but it is a hill. Um, we have to clear a fence. In other words, we have to hit the top of the fence. That's the same thing. Um, and we're throwing it horizontally, so find the minimum speed at which the ball must be thrown. Well, a good diagram helps you to work out what's going on. Identify the coordinates of this point here. Now, I've started by putting 8, 2.4, because it's 8 along and then 2.4 up, um, assuming the origin is at the bottom of the hill. But is that a sensible place to put the origin? Now, technically, it doesn't matter. We can put the origin there at the bottom of the hill, or we can put it at the top of the hill. It doesn't matter, but in any case, you have to be consistent. And if you don't put it at the top, you need to make a little trick later on to make the equations work. As you'll see, I'll show you both. So in purple, I'm going to write down the coordinates, assuming that the origin um, is at the top of the hill. So that would be still 8 along, but 2.5 down. So we're going to set up SUVAT. Now it's vector SUVAT because we're working in two dimensions. Now the um, acceleration is in all projectiles questions, unless you're on the moon, going to be 0 in the horizontal direction and, nine, and g down, so minus 9.8. Um, I've never seen a real exam question where they ask you to do something on a different planet with a different g. Um, but you can imagine that you, the only difference that would make there would you change the 9.8. Now I've set, uh, it doesn't tell us what letter to use as the unknown uh, initial speed in horizontal direction. So I'm just, I'm using u. So the vector u is u0. So u in the horizontal direction and nothing up and down. And then we've got two options, one red, one purple, for the displacement after some amount of time t has elapsed. Let's start by looking at the red. So assuming that the origin's at the bottom of the cliff or the hill. Um, we're going to use our old friend s equals ut plus a half a t squared, the vector form of it. If we substitute things into that, that's just a substitution I've applied there using our list of uh, suvat. Now, you can split that into two equations. So a vector equation in more than one dimension is really just a collection of two equations, the tops and the bottoms. So the tops is just 8 equals u, sorry, 8 equals ut. The bottoms, 2.4 equals, we've got no t, and we end up with half times minus 9.8 <coughs> times t squared. Now look, we've got a problem. This equation here we can't solve because it's got two unknowns, u and t. This one we can, in inverted commas, solve because it's only got one variable. But if you divide both sides by minus 4.9 and then attempt to square root, you're stuffed because you're square rooting a negative. So something's gone wrong. But let's continue and just think, let's just go back rather and look for where the problem occurred. Now it can't have occurred in, in any of these steps because these just came straight out of this equation here. So let's go back to that equation. Um, just note something about this suva. I said it's our old friend s equals ut plus a half at squared. But this equation that we're used to using assumes something. It assumes that we are, that the particle is projected from the origin. And if the particle is projected from the origin, as you can see I've drawn over here, the, <laughs> obviously the, it assumes the projectile is projected here, and it's going to follow this path here. And you can see obviously if it follows that path, it's never going to be able to, it's not just simply not going to pass through this point. So we've asked Essentially, we've asked the equations, when does this curve pass through this red point? 
And the fact that it doesn't is captured in the fact that we ended up trying to solve an impossible equation. So think about your transformations of functions. How would you get this curve to go up here? Well, we'd have to add 4.9 to the y value. Now, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, here, uh, yeah. Sorry, I got confused about my previous markings here. So I've just, just sorry, I've just, I've gone back and I've taken out the eight and the two point four because we know there's a problem with those red numbers. So we scrap those, and in the place I'm going to write x and y, just to say there's this general point x and uh, a general distance along x and general rather displacement rather uh, y upwards. Let's stick that back over here in this equation over here, and then write out those two separate versions of those equations again. So again, x equals ut and y equals minus 4.9t squared. Now, just consider for a moment t equals 0. If t equals 0, then x equals 0 and y equals 0, doesn't it, in these two equations? But we know actually that the, the curve doesn't pass through this point. So in order to correct that, we need to add 4.9. As we decided a second ago, we need to add 4.9 to the y equation. Let's do that. And then go back up and add that as a vector here. So it only works if we stick that there. How does that affect our old friend s equals ut plus a half at squared? Well, we can add that term there, s naught. You can think of that as a sort of adjustment you need to make before you can use it. And if you remember, one of the ways of deriving the, uh, the, the equation s equals ut plus a half at squared is to start with v equals u plus at and integrate it. So v becomes s, um, u becomes ut, and at becomes a half at squared, but you get a constant of integration, and that's what that is there. If you think all this looks messy, then it is, and you're right. So let's make a decision now that we're always going to move the origin to a point on our trajectory, um, if, uh, if, we've got, if we have to. Now, we didn't have to here. We could have just gone all the way back to the beginning and just decided, look, let's stick the origin at the top of the hill. So there's a big tip, put the origin, if you can, on the trajectory, and the, unless you're happy to make the adjustment that we've just seen. Um, we're now happy with s equals ut plus half at square, squared. If you want to imagine that there is still a plus s naught here, but the, that, that is a zero vector, so we, we can ignore it. Um, we can stick everything back in where it's supposed to go. There's our two separate equations. Now we've got something here that we can solve. Divide both sides by uh, minus 4.9, and we end up with 25 49 equals t squared, which square rooted gives us plus and minus 5 sevenths. Why is it plus and minus? Well, we know there's only going to be one time when we hit the top of the fence, but as far as the equations are concerned, if you imagine that we start there and go the other way, s equals ut plus a half at squared doesn't really know that we're only throwing the... Um, projectile in one direction to the right so it imagines we're throwing it to the left as well and it's a bit of a strange idea because um, it's only looking at the y coordinate um, there are two possible positions on the full version of this uh, uh, of this arc because one goes to the left there's two positions where we've gone down 2.5 meters um, so we're just going to take the positive square root of 25.49, so 5 sevenths, and therefore if we substitute 8 uh, in, into the equation 8 equals ut, we finally get our u in what you might think is a bit of a long-winded way, sorry about that, and we've got that. So there's the full working. If you knew what you were doing, that whole thing would take a lot less time than I've been speaking for. It would probably take about two minutes rather than ten. But I hope that's given you a bit more insight into it. Now, I've got a second part of the question to answer, which we will do quite quickly, and it is by the correct method, a similar method. Um, 
if the ball is thrown with this minimum speed of 11.2, find how far beyond the fence that it lands. Let's just rope off a bit of space here. A new Suvat. Now we're trying to hit this point here, which has coordinates something D. So I'm going to call it D and then minus 4.9. Remember, it's not zero. We need to measure down from here. So it's negative 4.9. So similar idea, we need to hit that point. Um, let's fill everything in, let's put that as our displacement. Our U we now know is 11.20. Our acceleration has not changed. T is just still just T, and we don't care about V. Use our old friend, S equals UT plus half AT squared. We can be co confident that we don't need uh, the adjustment because we're, we've put the origin on the arc. Um, Substitute everything in. Split into two separate equations. And solve that second equation. If you just divide both sides by that uh, of that by four by minus four point nine, you get t uh, straight away equals plus and minus one. Uh, again, we're only really interested in the positive uh, solution there. So it's taken one second for this ball to go all the way over there, just missing the fence and then hitting the ground over here. So substitute that in and we just get d equals 11.2 times 1, which is 11.2 metres. Now you might think that's your final answer, but don't always, always, always remember, or don't forget, to reread the question, find how far beyond the fence that it lands, and therefore we just need to subtract it. We, we want this distance here. So take away the 8 and we've got uh, 8 point, uh, sorry, 3.2 metres.